Tell you, watch out, Marshall, watch out, Marshall. But that's the tune. Eh? You come a little too late with that one about what? Something about beat it. Beat it. Beat what? <laughs> you gonna get some licks. All right. <laughs> Let me welcome uh, a very outspoken. He's not afraid to call the issues and speak directly. And I like when I hear you speak, Mr. Martin George, attorney at law. Um, good morning. Good morning to you and good morning, Tobago. And happy Valentine's happy to va all of Tobago yeah. and all the lovers out there, all the couples out there. You know, I mean, I think we need more love in this society. Mm -hmm. Do you think, do we, do we have love, really? What, what is happening, Mr. George? Well, the thing is, I think what has happened is we have strayed from our moorings in that, if you think back to years ago, Tobago was known as a place where people would look out for each other. In other words, you know, they say it's the old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. So if you had a neighbor who saw a child doing something wrong, that neighbor would correct the child, would say, hey, listen, stop that. Or, you know, um, you know, put a pinch on you or twist your hair and say, hey, look, stop that. And your parents would appreciate that. Yes. Your parents would commend the yes. neighbor for that. Yes. Now it has reached a scenario where the neighbor can't even speak to the child because the parents will come out and, you know, start to curse the neighbor and, you know, make a fuss. So therefore, you have a scenario where children have basically been allowed to run amok. So therefore, what we've done is we've created and nurtured little monsters in our homes and they just grew bigger and bigger over time. All right. But, but George, during the break, we were talking about, I just mentioned, we spoke about you being an attorney and you chose to go that route. Now, in your home, I spoke about Crown Court. Yeah. And you said you remember, and I asked you, <laughs> did you want to be a lawyer from that time? You said no. Now, during that time of your growing up, we're staying there, because that's where you were. Mm -hmm. uh, what you just spoke about was the love, you know. That neighbor had love for that child. Yes. That child is not her child, or is not his child. That's right. However, there is a desire to see those children grow. So parenting was not just to the parent in the home. That's right. But there was a every, communal effort. It was a communal yes. effort. All right. Yes. So let's come home to what the bitterness and the anger. What is contributing to the hate that is talking our land? What, well, given the home issue, further to that, or added to that, what is contributing to this? Well, I, I think it's because of a lack of guidance starting. We, we can't escape the home. And then in the wider society, they are not getting that either because, as I said, in, even in the community, those who may have been looking out for you, they are not because either they're concerned with their own affairs or whatever, or they're afraid to say anything. I mean, I can tell you honestly, as it stands now, you know, you, you, you may see a, a child doing something wrong, but you're afraid to say something because the parents... No precautions. That's right. The, the parents come into yes. class and treat with you. That, that's Even right. in the schools, teachers are afraid. Because parents come in with... with, with the, they put the tree canal in their waist and they're coming down for you. You know, so the point is we have to really take a step back. And I'll tell you something. Because I think Tobago is a microcosm of the wider society, I think we can start with Tobago and let us be the example. Tobago is not lost. We can pull back Tobago. And let me tell you, I, I am always on fire when I speak about Tobago because I have such great faith and belief in the people of Tobago and their capabilities. Mm. I think back to history. You look back, Tobago has produced some of the best and the brightest. We produce world leaders. You know, you think back to the achievements of a &R Robinson, you know, on the International Criminal Court. He was one of the founders there. Yes, yes. You take back to person like Victor Bruce, you know, former governor of the Central Bank. You know, so the point is we've always had that capacity and capability. We need to recapture that. We need to understand our past, understand our history. Mm -hmm. That is something we've lost there. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we must recognize that we are descended from kings and princes. We are, we are not peasants and slaves. We, we are persons who, from our ancestors and our forefathers in Africa, we were rulers, okay. you know? Yeah. When you think back to the great chiefs, you know, and we must understand that and we must not behave like peasants. Okay. We not, must not behave like bandits going and robbing people. And okay. that, that's not our, that's not our right. destiny. Mr. George, we have, well, we haven't tackled in totality the whole question of the domestic violence issue where we see women are being slaughtered. Uh, by our men. Um, I want to come back to that, but I first want to go to the rival gangs mm -hmm. that are marijuana peddlers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, <laughs> and let me just, the point I'm raising, I'm going to do this mm -hmm. quick preamble. Not so long ago, we almost branded coconut oil illegal in Tobago. I come in, eh? Mm -hmm. I want to say that very slowly to make the point that I'm bringing. Mm -hmm. We almost labeled coconut oil, Tobago coconut oil, as illegal. It was there was a campaign for us not to use coconut oil because it's going to destroy parts of our bodies and so on. I would be a little bit harsh in saying it in that fashion. However, the marijuana trade, mm -hmm. as you as an attorney are wearing your bib, it means that you have a court matter in a few minutes. <laughs> that is very prevalent. There's controversial. It's a very controversial topic right now when it deals with legalizing marijuana. Mm -hmm. The drug trade is as a result of a drug deal gone bad. A fella get, now he had to get vexed, you know, to settle the score of taking your life right. with a gun because the gun was bought with the drugs. How dangerous is marijuana? And can marijuana be seriously considered to be legalized? In the, given what we are seeing with the murderers, murders as far as the gang, marijuana gang, um, two fighting. Right. Well, the thing is, the way I like to look at things, I like to look at things in terms of what is our current state of the law. At present, it is a, a prohibited substance. It is illegal. If at some point the government decides for whatever reason that they wish to change that, then that's another issue. Because I tell you, for as many studies as you can find saying that, look, there are various health benefits and positives to it, you'd find just as many speaking of the negatives, you know, because I, I do research all the time. And you find just as many saying one thing and just as many saying the as opposite. As attorney, you know? give me your position on that. Can you so, do that? Well, in terms of as a scientific point of view, I could not. Okay. So therefore, I just simply go with what the law says, the state of the law. You know, it's similar to the death penalty. You know, whether <laughs> someone has a view for or against it, my point is, if that remains the law, then it has to be enforced. All right. Well, you know, I was coming to, I, <laughs> I wanted to deal with the marijuana, then come to the domestic violence, and then come to the death penalty. Yeah. But you, 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 I guess you see where the pattern is going, obviously being a practicing attorney. Now, all right, so you're saying that you're going on the part of the law. Yeah. But um, there is the in the air, the conversation about whether we should legalize marijuana or not, whether it's for medicinal purposes, whether it's to tax or to get rid of the killing among gangs. Well, I, I, I mean, we have even heard um, a call coming from as high an office as the Chief Justice yes. in his annual address, mm -hmm. you know, um, where he has suggested decriminalization of small amounts. But the point is, we must look at the purpose for which he has advocated that. He has not at all advocated it on the basis of any health benefit or whether it's good for you or, you know, these are the positives of it. He is simply looking at the clogs in the judicial system. system. And he is saying that, look, when you look at the number of cases, there are numerous cases mm -hmm. where persons are there for what you consider de minimis amounts, yes. what um, is commonly known in the all local right. parlance as a five-piece. All right, we're coming back piece. to the five-piece and you stick weed, <laughs> the push up, who push in the little stick weed, and you wonder who him for that. We gotta come back. All right, folks, so we are going for a quick break and we continue the conversation with Mr. Martin George, attorney at law. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I have made preparation. Uh, I have faced tribulation. Uh, this is my decoration. Uh, Holy uh, in the deep bush where I come from. Come from. Serpents and scorpions run when they see my right hand. Right hand. Fearing them for destruction. Oh. Afraid of no man and no boy and no woman, no girl and no thing. Turn up everywhere we turn up, turn up. If you don't got no money, well, don't turn up. Call when the real bad security turn up. Huh. Grab you and your friends like cattle get heard up. Put you out the club and the promoter them so word up. All the roster with the real bad money. All right, welcome, welcome. And we're turning it up inside Rise and Shine this morning. And for those of you on Pulse 89.5 FM, hello. We thank you for staying tuned. All right, so as Bonji said, let's turn it up. Now, uh, we're dealing with... Uh, well, we, we, <laughs> We are coming to the punishment that fits the crime. Um, I have have a problem. I have a problem with the. I said that the the prison system needs a purge. The death penalty cannot be carried out because of what? Just talk to that okay, quickly. Um, it's because of the various appeals that you have after you've exhausted your appeals in the traditional court system, in the judiciary, you have appeals to several international bodies. Because of the numerous treaties to which Trinidad and Tobago is a signatory, so you would have international bodies who now can entertain appeals from the prisoners for clemency. So the thing is, th these appeals are what 
actually takes most of the time. And then remember, you have the Pratt & Morgan decision of the Privy Council, which said that, look, if someone is more than five years okay. on death row waiting to be hung, then obviously they're saying that it's cruel and unusual. So then once a five-year limit is passed, then you can't yeah. hang them anymore. All right. So a criminal knows that. A fellow would-be criminal knows that. He hires a, a lawyer like yourself, and he says, listen, make sure this delay... This process is delayed. No, I'm not trying to. Uh, right? No, 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 no. But th that's exactly what happens in many. You cases. actually admitting that? No, no, no. It's a fact. The point is, they they seek to use the system, and as is their right, I guess. You know, if if you look at it, they seek to use the system as much as possible to delay what might otherwise have been the inevitable. And that's why I applaud our current Attorney General for his initiative, because what he says, he has implemented a case tracking unit whereby he has a real-time track on all these appeals. And if you remember, in the case of Glenn Ashby, the way that that um, hanging was carried out, it was between appeals. So in other hmm. words, one appeal had just been dismissed, uh -huh. and he had not yet filed so, so, another one. Right. So, so, and during that time, yes. that's when the state moved, and the okay. hangman no, no. was... All right, um, so, so let's, let's, let's take an individual. Um, I don't want to point to any particular individual. However, a murder was committed yesterday. Mm -hmm. This guy was arrested. He was uh, convicted and charged. I mean, he's charged and convicted. Mm -hmm. And he's sentenced to hang. Mm -hmm. he's, he's fresh. He just came into the prison. The murder was about my baby a month ago. And we, this guy is supposed to go to the gas chamber. Not the gas chamber, but the, the hangman. Or the 21 the, steps, is that what the they call it? The, the, yes. <laughs> I yes, think that's the it. Gallows. The gallows. The gallows. Mm -hmm. What is preventing him, given that it was, remember, he's not, he's there only a month. What is preventing him from being executed by the state? Because he would immediately have appeal. filed an appeal, right? Yes, yes. Oh, my. That, that, that occurs, yes. Immediately so, so, file an appeal. So, <laughs> because remember, even the, the, the prison offers you the form for you to file the appeal. They, they get them in the prison. Mr. George, let me ask you. <laughs> as an attorney, I mean, and I don't want you to put your colleagues who are looking on, you talking out with business. <laughs> but I think that that's why I like you, because you call a speed a speed. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is fair to this society? Well, the thing is, you see, you have to balance it, because I'll tell you, there is the possibility that there may be of a hundred convicted murderers, there may be one man who is innocent. Right. And that one man is afforded that opportunity. The others get it also. But if we remember our Bible, Jesus said, if you have a hundred sheep, and if 99 go astray, but if one comes back, then he's willing to make the sacrifice for that one. And that's exactly how the system works. All right. You know, so the point is, we always tend to err on the side of the rights of the individual, not forgetting or neglecting the rights of the state as an entity. But because there may be one individual there who may not have the resources, he may not have the contacts, he may not have the finances to hire a high-powered team of attorneys, so they offer that service whereby they in the prison, they can get the form, they can fill it out, they can su submit their appeal. So at least something is lodged on their behalf. It may be frivolous, it may not be, you know, w w the paper it's written on, but at least they have the opportunity. And as much as society will say, look, they should not be given a chance, we must always consider if one day one of our friends, relatives, brothers, sisters is in that position, we would be more than happy that that facility is there. So, you see, I always try to take an overall holistic view of things because it's easy for us to take a knee-jerk reaction. You know, even if you look at the situation with crime in Tobago and what has been happening, you know, a knee-jerk reaction would always be, you know, you ask, well, what is the THA doing? What is the assembly? That kind of thing. But people may not know the THA has already started and has embarked upon discussions and plans to do something about it. Mm -hmm. They may not have publicized it and come out, you know, mm -hmm. you know broadcasting it. Uh -huh. But the point is you have to take an, a long-term view of things. You cannot look for the quick fix because yes. that has been the problem in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. Our politicians largely have fooled us with that type of behavior, you know, thinking that, you know, it's a quick fix. You have persons coming into the Ministry of National Security as, you know, a gunslinger, mm -hmm. you know. Th there's no magic bullet okay. to solve crime All in right. Trinidad and All Tobago. Right. Let, let, let's go to the 
punishment that fits the crime. Uh, you spoke to the whole question of uh, why people cannot be hanged in this country, given the appeals that they make. Uh, I don't know how often they have to make this appeal. <laughs> but for some reason, Ramesh Lawrence Mirage, as Attorney General, find a way to execute a gang and the crew. Yes. And we all said, hip hooray. Mm -hmm. However, that is another conversation we will have to continue. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so let's go to the fellow with the stick weed, mm -hmm. the punishment that fits the crime. The uh, uh, Ivor Archie, uh, um, Je Chief Justice, mm -hmm. said that it doesn't make sense, and I'm paraphrasing here because I'm not using his exact mm -hmm. words, and I'm quoting him, I'm saying what he said in my own fashion. And he said it doesn't make sense to have in Riman Yard a fellow being held with a, a couple sticks of weed waiting to be tried. Mm -hmm. Well, it may not even end up there. And it clogs the system, the prison system. Your take on a slap on the risk versus capital punishment. Mm -hmm. Talk to us from that standpoint in treating with what, what, what uh, Chief Justice IG alluded, actually alluded to when he spoke to Dean it criminalizing marijuana. Okay, all right. Now, as I said, he spoke purely from the aspect of the clogs in the system. And while I appreciate that, yes, you have lots of minor cases clogging the system, I am not sure that advocating a broad brush decriminalization of de minimis amounts of marijuana is necessarily the solution. What I have suggested as an alternative, and that's why you see in Trinidad and Tobago, we have to start thinking outside the box. I've suggested that we create some Judge Judy type courts whereby you have persons who come. So in other words, it's agreed and accepted that, look, you are subjecting yourself to this process without attorneys. And I say this, and I mean no disrespect to my colleagues or my profession, but the point is, if you look at it, a lot of the delays in the criminal justice system occur because attorneys have many cases to do. They can't deal with this one today. They have, they're in the midst of another backlog. one. Mm -hmm. So that contributes to the backlog. Mm -hmm. But if you look at a Judge Judy type court... She you know, charges you. Basically, miss it, miss it, yeah. you appear, mm -hmm. you have your say, mm -hmm. they have their say, you make a decision one or the other, you, you deal with and it, move and on. therefore you're able to churn out a much faster throughput of cases. So therefore, for small matters, even small petty civil matters, because the petty civil courts are clogged, you know, mm -hmm. you can deal with things that way and you get them off their list. Mm -hmm. Other than what you have now, where a magistrate comes in, you have a hundred matters on your list, so all you end up doing is just adjourning? Because by the time you go through the first matter, you call you to see whether the prosecution is ready. Then the prosecution, I mean, I don't know if you know how the system works in the court, but it, it's, it's, I mean, it's almost hilarious. You have a prosecutor. He will bellow out the name of um, his complainant. Yeah. You know, then that name is bellowed out by an officer at the door. Then they bellow it out at the corridor. Sometimes they get it wrong. So it's sometimes funny to hear the, the way the name is changing <laughs> as it goes along. Right, right, right. And that's the system in 2017. So, but, but, but you are saying that, and you, I can see the pain. So it frustrates you even to... Of course. I, but li listen, I can tell you. Every time I go to the Scarborough Magistrates Courts, as I walk through the corridors, members of the public can attest to this, I apologize to them. First of all, the conditions there are appalling. You have persons herded like cattle just standing up there. They don't have adequate seating facilities. They don't have proper, you know, um, there, there's no cafeteria, nothing, nothing. It, it, it's absolutely unacceptable right. in this day and age that that's how we are dispensing justice mm -hmm. and then we are saying the system is clogged when there are so many little things that we can do to ease the frustration even parking okay. members of the public can't get parking attorneys get trouble to get parking sometimes and you wonder how do you expect a system to function like that okay. and you look at it it's very simple there's a big large grassy area that could some of it could be used Converted for additional car, parking yeah, yes, I mean it's not the Queen's Park Savannah yes. where persons will come out and protest and say well okay. don't pave this part of it if you understand me you don't have right. to use all of it but simple little things can be done mm. if one wants practical solutions okay all right so our judicial system is uh, a hindrance to swift justice what does swift justice mean to you what does well, it say to you and when we okay for example the, the, the slaying of that young lady whose throat was slit obviously all the nation feel the pain and the anger and so on and you hear people calling for justice. What does swift justice mean to you, Mr. George? Well, the thing is that swift justice would be something that, first of all, is fair. 
because I would never want to sacrifice fairness on the altar of expediency. In other words, as much as we are outraged and upset and annoyed, I would want, first of all, that the police do a thorough investigation, that their investigation you know, covers all bases, that they interview all possible suspects, rather than you just simply go and you arrest someone simply to appease the public outcry. Because we've seen that type of thing happen in the yes. past, and it never results in quote-unquote justice at the end of the day. So we must always approach things with a measured calm response, regardless of the circumstances. As, I, as I've always told people, I said, listen, no matter how desperate the circumstances are, you must never act in desperation. Hmm. You must always retain that calm and control so that at the end of the day, what your end result produces is something that can stand the test of time. Very good. All right. So we have a few more minutes. And I want us to take care, while you're on me, because he needs to mop a little bit, I see him sweating. I don't know if it's the first time I've seen you being interviewed <laughs> by a number of, of people, yeah, uh, but the first time I've seen you sweat. So apparently something <laughs> is happening in this studio. conversation. Yes, studio. all right. But um, all right. So we, we have pointed to a number of contributing factors that, well, uh, we are coming to this point now, that criminals may feel, given the explanation you gave, that they... Look, they're not hanging people. Mm -hmm. um, I could always appeal and after appeal, 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 and live forever mm -hmm. in that system. Mm -hmm. Because the system provides that for him. Mm -hmm. He could be as guilty as sin. Mm -hmm. We know he committed the crime. He's sentenced to hang, but he cannot hang because this system is in place. How do we buffer that? How do we make the adjustment? Because we had Abu Bakr here mm -hmm. on air. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, um, uh, how does he feel about 1990? Did, after 1990, we saw murders and, and all the mayhem took that place That was the defining that. moment in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. You agree? I always say that. Very good. We went downhill from there and all have right. never recovered. So you agree that I punishment must fit the crime. I Treason was the, is, a, is, a, is the most heinous crime across the I world. Agree. It's punishable by death up I to today. Agree. And to, well, we are being threatened every Monday morning <laughs> and so on. However, how do we get to making it work to appease and to bring justice. Remember, I asked you to, def well, you define justice from that standpoint. But how do we bring justice to the grieving family? That child whose parents and grandparents and siblings are hurting as a result of the life snuffed away from her by somebody who believed they had the right to do that. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. In Britain, they have a victim's support unit where they counsel victims, they counsel the families of victims. And I have a friend who went through the process and they call every day with updates. They let you know the status of the investigation. They let you know, well, who they have interviewed, you know, who they have brought in, all those things. So therefore, at least the family gets that respect that they feel, well, look, something is being done and these people respect me enough to notify me and inform me of what is happening. I have seen too often in Trinidad and Tobago our police take the opposite approach. We can't tell you anything. That is confidential. That is a matter of national security. Up to yesterday, I think I heard it um, at a press conference, you know, and I am not sure that I necessarily agree with that approach because you see all over the world, Police services are becoming more transparent in the way they do things. You look at in, um, in the U.S. how it occurs. Something happens, the police chief is out there, he's explaining to the public, he's giving a press conference, he's giving the details of yes. the investigation. He's saying, look, we had three persons interviewed, you know. So I'm not sure why we in Trinidad and Tobago feel that we must take this clandestine approach whereby you're telling the public, you can't tell them anything, you are doing, you know, you make it seem that you're in charge and you're in, on top of things, and yet still we've not seen the results. You look at the detection rate, it's abysmally poor. So therefore, it's not even to say that by you taking this covert clandestine approach, you're producing results. So then you may as well 
tell us uh, and come out so and level policing, with us. Policing is very critical. It is extremely uh, yes, critical. Because we need I've to resolve. always said. All right, Mr. George, <laughs> we got to go. We have morning news. Hello, you have to, Mr. We want to continue this we, conversation. We need more time. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. George. And hey, people, I'm not afraid to ask the tough questions. That's what I do here. Hey, folks, we go for the break. The morning news is up next. After we come back, we give you more. Stay tuned. <laughs> When she start to jam, I give and she all, all I'm here, I give and she all.